do we need to know all this about fats? We need to know a little bit about the details of fats so that when we hear about them, we can understand, begin to understand why um, some are good and some are bad. And as it turns out, 30% um, of our calories come from fats, okay, in the diet. Okay, and you can say fats or lipids. Those words are used interchangeably. Maybe the more common um, layman's term is fats, but normally um, nutritionists, chemists, and biochemists use the word lipids, but we, we, we can use those words interchangeably, and we know what we're talking about. We're talking about a large group of molecules, in particular nutritionally, we're talking about um, cholesterol and triglycerides. Okay, well, it turns out that, um, you know, 30% of our calories come from fats, and traditionally Americans have uh, had a diet that's too high in fat, sometimes all the way up to 50%. That's too much because high-fat diets have been linked to obesity and heart disease. And we'll look at part of the problem with fats um, and the fact that they have a higher calorie content when we get to, um, at the end of talking about macro and micronutrients, we'll come back to this concept of calorie content per gram. Um, fats have more calories per gram than, um, than do other uh, macronutrients. And so, um, but it's important to have some fat in your diet because um, fats have some fat soluble vitamins dissolved in them and as it turns out there's actually uh, your body can you know catabolize and anabolize which means to break down and build up um, various molecules to build up the types of fatty acids that they need except for there's two essential fatty acids two fatty acids that your body does not make are um, let's see here linol linoleic and linolenic acids must be ingested we cannot um, make those those fatty acids ourselves. There has been some talk that linoleic acid, linolenic acid can be metabolized in the body from linoleic, but just not enough. So both of these fatty acids must be consumed. And the reason why is because um, they are then converted to arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid is a precursor for a lot of uh, prostaglandins. And we talked about prostaglandins um, earlier in the semester and how important they are as chemical messengers to regulate all kinds of metabolic processes including you know body temperature and and uh, swelling and all kinds of things okay so um, so you know some fat is necessary in the diet also um, you know cholesterol is important in uh, cell membranes and as a precursor for other um, hormones but your body can uh, metabolize cholesterol you don't have to eat it you can make it yourself out of um, saturated fatty acids. So it's not necessary to um, ingest all the cholesterol that you need because your body can make it. And also as far as these essential fatty acids go, uh, most people don't have a problem with not getting enough fat. As a matter of fact, it only takes one teaspoon of corn oil to get um, enough um, linoleic and linolenic acid to meet your dietary requirements only one teaspoon. Uh, people who have some sort of uh, issues with uh, eating fats or a very, very restricted diet or people who, for example, have been in it real sick and they're only getting um, calories from an IV or if it's an infant that's being fed a formula that does not contain those fatty acids, those are people that run the risk of having um, um, some, some uh, problems. And the problems that they have are um, skin, um, irritation and um, increased uh, infections and for infants they don't grow if they don't have these um, amino acids in their diet. Okay, so there are some health effects associated with it and we do know that there's some fatty acids that must you must get from a well-balanced diet.